Okay, we're gonna go ahead now and install our window. So here we have our 24 by 24 inch window. Um, we already have our opening framed and prepared with our pan. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and dry fit our window to just to make sure that it fits. Um, so very simple, just go ahead and put it in the opening itself. All right, make sure it sits tight to the um, tight to the house. And whenever I have it in here dry fit, I like to kind of try to move it around just to see where, um, where my gaps are. So it looks like I have a little bit of a gap going up and down and we're pretty good um, side to side. Uh, so um, there's a couple of different style, styles of windows. Um, this is a new construction window. Uh, meaning it has this nailing flange all the way around. Um, so there's no nailing through the jam of the window into the um, into our studs or our headers or sill or anything. Um, these are super easy to install and they're also super easy to flash. Um, so what I was just doing there um, by moving it around in the opening, I wanna try to center this window in the opening. It's gonna make um, trimming a lot easier um, when we get to that finished stage of our project. Um, basically, if you have this uh, window centered, um, it just makes um, centering the trim on the window a lot easier. And um, if there's any irregular uh, surfaces on our studs, um, it gives you a little bit of play uh, with to be able to shim your trim uh, or window jams in place. Uh, so I like to try to get it centered. Um, with these pre-construction windows, um, it can be, especially with a square one, it can be really easy to accidentally install it upside down. So one thing that you wanna look for are these little holes on the bottom. Um, these are weeping holes. Um, so on the outside of this window, there's a screen here. Um, rain can come and hit the glass of the window, run down and get caught in the bottom of this part of the window. Um, so there's these weeping holes so that rain can run out. Make sure that those weeping holes are um, towards the bottom of your window. If you accidentally install it upside down, one, you're gonna have an upside down window, but two, you're gonna have water pooling um, in the now bottom of your window um, and that'll start coming back in towards your house. And so make sure those weeping holes are towards the bottom and pointing uh, towards the outside. So we got a good fit. Um, looks like we're going to want to push our window up a little bit. Um, another thing I like to do is just quickly check um, to see if we're pretty much level, uh, which we are. So theoretically, I should just be able to push our window up um, and center into our opening. Um, so everything fits good and we're ready to start installing the window. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out here and I'm gonna go ahead and lean it on the ground here. And I got um, some silicone and I'm just gonna go ahead and go all the way around the outside edge here with silicone. You wanna make sure you have a good continuous bead This is gonna help uh, if any water happens to get behind the siding, uh, but even more importantly, it'll keep drafts out of um, coming from behind the, the trim boards here. All right, good generous amount. And then what we can do is we can go ahead and put this in the opening here. All right, and squish it into place. If a little comes out, no worries. All right, we're gonna get it centered in the middle. And then I'm gonna also bring it up just a hair to get it off that bottom. Um, so we're centered um, top and bottom wise. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take a nail and I have just uh, some common uh, roofing nails we use roofing nails because they have a really wide head here. Um, you just want to make sure that when you nail, um, you're nailing directly into 
uh, the header or the shoulder studs or the sill plate. That's why you want to uh, frame your opening to the required um, or recommended rough opening uh, that the manufacturer sends along. Um, that way uh, the opening is not too wide and it gives you plenty of surface area for your nails um, to hit some good structure. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this top middle one. And I'll show you here in a second. But I'm just hammering this nail just so it's snug, uh, snug and touching this plastic. Uh, I'll remove the ladder here for a sec and show you on one of these bottom ones. But um, th this is a vinyl material and this vinyl likes to expand and contract. Um, so when I'm putting these nails in, uh, these uh, nail holes in this flange are oblong. Um, so uh, this nail, or basically the window can move back and forth on this nail as it expands and contracts. Um, so I am, whenever I'm nailing, I'm going right in the middle of that oblong hole so it gives that little bit of play room um, so it can move over time. Um, and again, I'm not nailing this nail super tight. I'm getting it snug. Um, and snug will keep it to the, uh, to the wall. And again, that's why you want to hit some, some good uh, structure behind that with this nail so that nail doesn't pop out over time when this uh, window moves. Um, okay, so I got that top nail in. You can see I can still move this window back and forth for some minor adjustments. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put my ladder back in place here. And now... What I want to do is make sure that my window is level, which looks like it has to slide that or this way, just a hair. All right. And then I want to make sure that it's also plumb too. What's going on here? Oh, level stuck. There we go. All right. That looks decent, move it just a hair. And sometimes you want to watch out uh, with these vinyl windows. They have these, uh, these little nubs on the end um, from when they do the plastic welding. Uh, so sometimes those can get in the way of your reading. Um, so you can see I read level on the bottom, but I was hitting that little nub. So made my plumbness off a little bit. So I'm just going to hold it down just a little bit so that reveals the same. Okay, we're level there. And we're plumb there. Okay, so I just have that one nail in the top. Now I'm going to go ahead and put one nail on the bottom just to kind of hold it in place. And you want to take your time nailing because you're really close um, to this J trim here. Make sure you don't hit it. Go ahead and move this ladder out of the way. Okay. Again, I'm just nailing that just so it's uh, just so it's snug. Um, window's not moving, but over time, uh, that's enough um, enough play to let this uh, window move back and forth. All right, so I have it exactly where I want it. It's centered in the opening. Um, now the only thing left to do is to go back and fill every single one of these nail holes uh, with a roofing nail. Again, remember just so it's snug uh, for tightness and get, get that nail centered um, in that opening for each uh, nail hole. So we'll go ahead and um, get this window nailed off and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to put the window flashing on. Okay, we got our uh, window nailed off um, and it's important to note um, I got a few nails in there um, just so it wouldn't move around. Um, and then before completely uh, nailing it off, I went around on the inside here. Um, and I just made that the, uh, made sure that the window operated properly. Uh, so yeah, you just want to make sure that it uh, opens and closes um, and that it looks square in the opening um, and that it operates properly. 
Uh, so we're good to go. 